Welcome to the Social Good Summit on behalf of the 92nd Street Y, Mashable, the United Nations Foundations, and the United Nations Development Program. My name is Henry Timms. It's my great privilege to be the executive director here at the Y. I start by welcoming uh, this full house here at the Y. I welcome, too, all the people listening via live stream. We're being translated live from the Y in seven languages around the world. I welcome, too, in 109 countries around the world, starting two days ago and lasting for two more days, in 109 countries around the world, people are getting together in groups like this one to roll up their sleeves and begin to address these 17 goals on these flags behind me. We all should welcome, in 109 countries, the social good community around the world. And I'm going to tell you just one story. I was watching yesterday the Social Good Summit event in Ghana. And we were seeing that come in via live stream and social media. And there were two things from the event in Ghana that really made me think. The first, there was a new invention. They were talking about an app they had there. They've worked out a way to geo-target people's locations. One of the challenges that they have is some parts they haven't got good street addresses. So this geo-targeting allows emergency services to respond much more quickly. Our community there was getting really excited about the potential of that innovation. And then they talked about something else. They had a conversation yesterday in Ghana, not about technology, not about innovation, not about disruption. They had a conversation about shyness. They talked about how sometimes we feel too shy to try something new. Things are holding us back. And it reminded me that the Social Good Summit at its heart is not a conversation about technology, primarily. It's a conversation about the great challenge of our generation, which is not going to be, can we fill the world with greater technology alone? The big challenge of our generation, and the one we're trying to answer with this conference, is can we fill the world with greater humanity? It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the Social Good Summit and to introduce a message from the Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. Welcome to this dynamic Social Good Summit. I'm proud that the United Nations Development Program is joining with the UN Foundation, Mashable, and the 92nd Street Y to make this event possible. There are so many dynamic participants, artists and activists, corporations and community leaders, global citizens from around the world. We need your ideas now more than ever. This is a time of fear and heartbreak. Millions of people are suffering from devastating conflicts. Millions live in poverty. The entire planet is threatened by climate change, but this is also a time for hope. Governments are about to adopt Agenda 2030, a bold plan to lift all people out of poverty. This is not just an agenda for sustainable development. It will also foster stability. The forces of division are using new technologies to spread their hateful ideologies. But the Social Good Summit proves that with solidarity, we can harness communications for human progress. I count on you to help advance our common vision of a life of dignity for all. Thank you. Uh, and now it's my great pleasure to introduce, to begin the Social Good Summit, uh, Richard Curtis. R Richard is a filmmaker, an activist, a creator, a producer, and he and his team, Kate Garvey and Gail Galley, were really the people who got behind this idea of making these goals famous. Uh, we are all part of that work. Uh, we are all led by Richard Curtis. It's a great pleasure to welcome him to the Y stage. Thank you. Um, I, I, very, it's very, very good to be here. Um, I'll say some proper things in a second. I just I want to tell you I'm particularly fond of Ban Ki-moon because my young son, who's prone to misunderstandings, we once had a babysitter who was called Fedra, and he thought it was Federer, Roger Federer, and <laughs> was surprised before she arrived that Federer had time to come and take care of him while we went out to the movies. Um, and my son calls him Banksy Moon and says, <laughs> Uh, it's the best possible disguise for a rogue artist that, 
Uh, during the day, he pretends to be um, Secretary General of the UN. Um, and then at night, he goes out and paints pictures of rats um, on British high streets. But there we go. Um, uh, I just wanted, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to talk for a second about a few minutes about the word and um, and how much better that word is than either or. We hate either or, we love and. Um, because the MDGs were uh, an amazing thing. And uh, I was really inspired during the last few years by Bill Gates once saying to me that he thought that People thought of the last 15 years as a time of terrorism, financial problems, nationalism, but he thought of them as the greatest 25 years in the history of human civilization because the MDGs had been part of a movement that had led to child mortality for under fives going down from 12 million a year to 6 million, and nothing like that had ever occurred in the history of civilization. So I'm an enormous fan of the MDGs, and then when it came to replacing them, a lot of people just wanted the MDGs to finish. But we're in an and situation. And what we've got is the MDGs and all they achieved and these extraordinary new sustainable development goals. And the thing about the sustainable development goals, which is so extraordinary, is they are the ultimate and. They actually decided that it would be good to have a proper analysis of poverty. And it's not just hunger, as it were, it's not just poverty and development, it's got to be and jobs, and economic growth, and absolutely crucially things to do with the environment, and to do with climate change, and to do with justice. And what I think is so amazing about these new SDGs is that they are so comprehensive and a massive invitation, and that invitation is particularly to everyone here today, today, to become involved. So it's NGOs, left-wing NGOs who hate businessmen and <laughs> businessmen who have their doubts about left-wing NGOs. <laughs> They're all together. And I was, we were talking to Bono the other day and he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over to Malala. Um, he said, old white man, um, from the West to a brilliant young woman from Pakistan. Um, and the person he was talking to said, no, unfortunately, old bloke, um, we need you both. We do need Bono and Malala. We need people who don't understand what a computer is still, and all of you who are so extraordinary at communicating and using all the new things that there are. And we also need deep and shallow. Uh, the extraordinary thing about the goals is they've been so carefully thought through. They really, really do have an analysis of poverty and all this extraordinary number of targets. But you also need to make them fun and interesting. And I volunteered for the shallow task a year ago to try and simplify them, put them in bright colors, see if we can talk them into being called the global goals for sustainable development uh, as well. And we, also, we need all of everybody to think, how can I get involved in trying to achieve the end aim of these goals, which is this extraordinary thing of being the first generation to end extreme poverty, the most determined generation to fight injustice and inequality, and the last generation to be threatened by climate change. And Everybody is invited to this party. It is not exclusive. If you really, really, really feel very angry about corporate tax, great. The goals are for you. And if you care about actually some species surviving, the goals are for you. And if you care about no one dying of hunger, the goals are for you. It's a very, very, very inclusive um, agenda. And today is the definitive and because we are somewhere between before and after these new goals. Today is and. Um, we've done everything we can to make them famous. And as we speak, we're heading towards a week where the group of people that I've been working with 
have got a cinema that went out, a cinema ad that went out, I think, in the 35 biggest countries in the world yesterday, a hundred countries where lessons are being taught in every single school, um, Wikipedia and all the internet giants doing everything they can to spread the news around, a billion text messages that have gone out around the world. That was the before, tell everybody about them. That's what we want to achieve this week. That's what we're asking you all to do. And afterwards, we have to make them work, make these goals not only famous, but then extraordinarily effective. And there's that thing which is the most important thing to me, the big and, which is ask for a huge amount of money, ask for governments to do enormous things, but all that time, remember the fact that you are also talking about individual human lives as precious as the lives of whoever you love most. It would be worth fighting for the goals, talking about the goals, doing everything you can to save one life, and yet we all have it in our power to actually change an enormous number of lives. And I think that's absolutely true for everybody in this room, everybody who's listening in all the other countries. So I'd ask you, we're gonna take a day today for the end to celebrate the fact that the goals are here, that the intentions are good, and then I would ask you, if possible, if you got the time, um, to spend 15 years doing nothing except um, <laughs> Uh, make, no, you, you could make the goals famous uh, and um, do your own jobs, but if you could also try and work to make these things come true so that by 2030 um, this will be a party. So I was going to crack some sort of joke about drugs, but I realized they're bad. Um, uh, so. so. Um, I suppose the last thing to say is just over the, um, just over the, uh, if the, uh, just over this week, the goals are more important than Kim Kardashian's bottom. That's like the only thing. <laughs> it's about, I know, uh, I know not everyone agrees with that, but uh, if we can try and make them as famous and then as effective, uh, more effective. Uh, no, I, 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 this, this is a disastrous simile. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic time at the summit. I hope you all learn a huge amount about the goals. You're just about to learn a lot more. And just before I go, and, and we're going to show a little video after which you will have one of the most extraordinary ands you've ever seen because seven people, this person and that person and that person are about to come out on stage and talk about one goal each. Have a fantastic time. Thank you very much. Good luck to the planet. Um, I'm glad to be here. One in five people live on less than $1.25 a 
25 a day. That's more than 850 million people living in extreme poverty, and that is unacceptable. I'm Helen Clark, Administrator of the United Nations Development Programme. Goal number one is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. Tell everyone. Right now, nearly 800 million people are malnourished. I am Grasa Michelle, a women and children's rights activist and elder. Goal two is to end hunger, to achieve food security and improved nutrition, and to promote sustainable agriculture. We must ensure that no one in any part of the world wakes up asking if there will be food today. Tell everyone. I am Victoria Beckham, UNAID's Goodwill Ambassador and mother of four. Goal three is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for everyone, everywhere. Access to good health care shouldn't depend on where you live. I'm sure we all want to see a world where no one has to die from a disease that can be prevented or treated. Let's support, educate and empower women everywhere to be able to achieve this for their children. Please tell everyone. Deprive children of quality education and you deprive them of the opportunities that can help them break out of the cycle of poverty. A cycle that traps people in disadvantage and makes them more vulnerable to disease. A cycle that puts girls at risk of violence and slows the growth of our global economy. I am Rania Abdullah of Jordan, and I believe in the power of education to create lasting change. Goal number four is to give every child a quality education and to promote lifelong learning opportunities for everyone. Everyone has a right to education. Please tell everyone. Hi. Empowering women and girls impact every part of our world future. Health, education, sustainability, economic growth, and more. I am a Lekwek, originally from South Sudan, model and a goodwill ambassador for UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency. Goal number five, is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls so they have equal opportunities to thrive, the powerful and to be counted and be safe. Those are very important human rights. So please, let's tell everybody. mother to twins, a boy and a girl. I want to see a world where my children are seen as equals and all women and girls have the same opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We can't succeed if half the world is held back. Support the global goals. Tell everyone. One billion people live without access to clean water. This means that every minute a child dies of a waterborne disease. I'm Pete Cashmore, the founder and CEO at Mashable. 
Goal number six is to ensure availability of water and sanitation for everyone. People everywhere deserve access to clean water and proper sanitation at home, at school, and at work. Together, we can restore this basic livelihood and dignity to all who go without. Tell everyone. Did you know that nearly one and a half billion people on our planet today are living in the dark without access to basic electricity? And the energy we do produce is putting our planet and our people at extreme risk. I am Kathy Calvin. I'm the president and CEO of the United Nations Foundation. I'm Laura Turner Seidel, and I'm an international environmentalist and advocate. And goal number seven, very important goal, is to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Together, we have a responsibility to bring light, heat, and power to everyone without destroying the planet. Let's tell everyone. In the next five years, an additional 10 million people worldwide are likely to be unemployed. This does not have to be the case. And companies and entrepreneurs alike stand ready to help change the future. I am Karen Kintos, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Dell. Goal number eight is to promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Please tell everyone. Settle down. <laughs> You'll have your moment. <laughs> Without proper infrastructure, we cannot build successful societies. Hospitals, roads, schools, businesses, marketplaces, and more. They require basic groundwork and resources in order for our communities to survive and to thrive. At the same time, without innovation, we cannot advance our planet and our people. The success of, in a, of our community requires that we think outside the box and use technology to our greatest ability for a good time. I am Ahmed Mohammed, student and inventor. And I, I am his uh, warm-up act, Gary Nell, the CEO of the National Geographic Society. <laughs> Goal number nine is to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation for all. Tell everyone. Human rights are inherent to each of us, whoever we are and wherever we come from. We are all entitled to live free, equal, and with dignity. I am Amina Mohammed, the Secretary General's Special Advisor on the post-2015 development planning. Goal 10, to reduce inequality within and among countries. This will create a world where extremes of injustice are defeated and where the gap between Separate, that separates us is narrowed and inequality and acceptance is, comes first. Tell everyone. Uh, 
More than half of the world population live in towns and cities. By 2030, that number will grow to 5 billion people. Our cities are so important to our global economy, culture, and science. Yet, they are suffering because of congestion, shortage of affordable housing, and lack of funds. Also, because of lack of long-term planning. I am Mo Ibrahim, entrepreneur and founder of Mo Ibrahim Foundation. Goal number 11 is to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable for all. Please tell everybody. Overconsumption is a dangerous cycle for each of us and for future generations. The more we consume, the more we have to produce. And the more we have to produce, the more strain we put on our people and on our planet. I'm Connie Britton, Goodwill Ambassador for the UN Development Program. Goal number 12 is to replace what we consume and together create a planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. Please tell everyone. Climate change impacts each of us. Across continents, we are seeing changes in rainfall, resulting in dangerous droughts, flooding, and severe heat waves. The planet's oceans are warming and becoming more acidic, ice caps are melting, and sea levels are rising. It is our moral, political, and social obligation to act now for our generation and those to follow. I am Shutesca Martinez, climate activist, earth guardian, and musician. Goal number 13 is to take urgent action to protect our planet and roll back the threat of climate change. This is an issue of justice. Tell everyone. An estimated 19 billion pounds of plastic waste is dumped into our oceans every year. The destruction of our oceans is not only a problem for life below water, but it's equally a problem for all of us above it. The more we pollute our waters, ignore its ecosystems, and take more than is necessary, the more we threaten our own humanity. I am Adrian Grenier, actor, entrepreneur, and Dell social good advocate. Goal number 14 is to restore and protect the life in our oceans and seas, and in doing so, protect each of us. Tell everyone. Everywhere we look, the degradation of our natural habitat is underway. An estimated 18 million hectares of forests are lost each year. Poaching, deforestation, droughts, floods, and more continue to hunt our ecosystem. I am Feli Shamrakan, Black Mamba's anti-poaching unit, Ranger. Goal. <laughs> Goal number 15 is to protect life on land and restore the richness of the earth. Tell them. Fifty million people are currently displaced by war and unrest. Boys and girls are used as soldiers and are forced into sexual service. As long as there's violence, there will be poverty. I am Ishmael Beer, author, former child soldier, UNICEF advocate for children affected by war. Goal number 16 is to promote peaceful and inclusive societies between and within countries, where all governments are open and answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And justice rules with everyone equal before the law. Please do tell everyone.
Philosopher Marcus Cicero said, we were born to unite with our fellow men and join in community with the human race. Nothing we achieve can be done alone. We need one another, and we need to come together to tackle the worst crisis affecting humankind. I'm Paul Pullman, the CEO of Unilever and father of three. Goal number 17 is for all countries and their citizens to work together in partnership of all kinds to make these global goals for sustainable development a reality for everyone, everywhere. Please tell everyone. And now we'll have everyone on stage. Okay, well done. 